Hello. Welcome once again to this channel and to our series on strength of materials. We are happy to see you once more. Kindly subscribe, like, share, and leave your comment and suggestions at the comment section. This series, we are looking at strength of materials or mechanics of deformable bodies. And this is lecture one. Lecture one is going to focus on introduction to strength of materials. Good. Basically, Engineering mechanics is divided into various sessions. Therefore, when we have engineering mechanics, this is engineering mechanics. Engineering mechanics is divided into two broad categories. We have fluid mechanics, fluid mechanics, and then we have mechanics of solids. Mechanics of solids. Fluid mechanics deals with everything relating to fluid. For example, an aircraft, an aircraft moving in the air because the air is a fluid moving around the aircraft, we are talking about fluid mechanics. But we talk about the shift's interaction with the fluid as it's moving in the water. We're also talking about some fluid mechanics and many more. However, in this series, we are not going to focus on fluid mechanics. Rather, we'll be focusing on mechanics of solids. Mechanics of solids is also divided into two categories. We have the mechanics of rigid body. Mechanics of rigid body. And then we also have mechanics of deformable mechanics of deformable solids of deformable bodies of deformable bodies bodies in mechanics of rigid bodies in mechanics of rigid bodies it is assumed that the bodies involved are perfectly rigid. And because the bodies involved are perfectly rigid, it is assumed that a force applied to the body does not cause any form of deformation. When you apply a force to a rigid body, it does not cause any form of Information. That is our assumption under mechanics of rigid body. However, anytime a force is applied to a body, there are two basic effects which take place. When a force is applied to a body, we have two main effects. The first one is what we call the external effect of a force, external effect. And then the second one is what we call the internal effect of a force, of a force. These are the two basic effects of forces. However, when we talk about the external, the external effect of a force, 
we are talking about the change of state of a body. So we are talking about the changes of states of motion. We are talking about the changes of state of motion, which we can say that the body at rest, the body at rest may start to move upon application of a force. Also, a body moving will stop moving or come to a rest with the application of a force. And we can also talk about changes in velocity, changes in velocity of a moving, a moving body. All these are external effects of forces. We can also talk about forces keeping the body in equilibrium. External forces keeping bodies in equilibrium, in equilibrium. That is also an external effect of a force. Anytime we talk about, anytime we talk about external effects of a force, of a force, without considering the internal effects of that force, the internal effect of that force then it means that we are dealing with mechanics of rigid bodies, mechanics of rigid bodies. And it means that we are dealing with mechanics of rigid bodies. Well, we don't talk about internal effects of forces. However, as we assume in mechanics of rigid bodies, bodies are not perfectly rigid. Bodies are not perfectly rigid. And therefore, forces which are applied to them or forces which act on them may cause various forms of deformations, may cause various forms of deformations to the body. So we are saying that Bodies are not perfectly rigid. Bodies are not perfectly rigid. Perfectly rigid. And hence, application of a force on the body will cause some form of deformations. Some form of deformations. And these deformations, these deformations which which the forces will cause to the bodies involved, to the bodies involved, is what we term as internal effects of forces. It's what we call the internal effect of forces. And anytime we are talking about these deformations, which we call as the internal effect of forces, then it means that we are dealing with mechanics of deformable bodies, which we can also talk about the strength, which we can also refer to it as strength of materials, which we can also refer to as strength of material. Therefore, in this series, our focus will not be on rigid bodies as in our previous series. However, in this series, our focus is going to be on mechanics of deformable bodies, which we can also call as strength of material. Now, anytime a force acts on a body, the internal effect or the deformations which a force can cause to a body 
is in five categories, which we can simplify and say that we can simplify and also say that the internal effects of forces are five. The internal effect of forces or the deformation caused by forces are basically five. Therefore, the first internal effect of a force on the body, which we can talk about here, is tension. 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 For example, if I have a bar or a beam like this, this is a beam or member of a truss system. When I apply, don't forget that we can have two axes here. This is the longitudinal axis, which runs through the length of the member. And we can also have the transverse axis like this. However, if I apply a force at the longitudinal axis, like this one force here, and another force at this side, then you can see the direction of these two forces which are applied. These two forces are trying to stretch or elongate the body involved or the material involved. And therefore, these forces which are trying to elongate this member here is said to be it's said to be in tension. So that is the first effect of a force on a body. The second effect which we can talk about is compression. Compression. Now, when we talk about compression, it is the opposite of tension. You can see that in tension, the forces were pointing away from the member when the forces were applied at the longitudinal, the longitudinal side of the member. Now in compression, the forces are pointing towards the member like that, are pointing towards the member. Therefore, in compression, what happened is that the member, the forces causes the member to reduce in size, reduce in size, or reduction in size, or the member is shortened by the application of the forces. The third effect of a force which we can talk about is what we also refer to as sharing, sharing. Now, what do we mean when we talk about sharing force or the sharing effect of a force? If I have a member here, don't forget that in the two effects we have already described, the forces were applied at the longitudinal section of the member. However, if a force is applied at the transverse as the transverse axis of the member. For example, if I have one force pointing this direction here as P, and another force pointing at this side as P, because these two forces are acting in the opposite direction on the member and they are acting transversely, they are going to cause one part of the member to, they are going to cut one part of the member from the other side. And because there is cutting of the member, that is why that effect is referred to as the sharing effect of a force. Therefore, we can explain sharing effect of a force as when unaligned pushing 
of one specific direction and the other in the opposite direction. As you can see here, the two forces are unaligned and this force is pushing the, the body downwards, whereas this force is pushing the body upwards. And so what will happen is that they will cause, they will cut this member into two pieces. And that is what we refer to as the sharing effect of a force. And the other one, we can also talk about the fourth one is bending. Bending. In that case, when a force is applied on a body, which causes the object to bend, for example, the same member, but now we are applying a force at the middle here, which results in the bending of the member there. So we are going to experience the force is going to cause the member to deform like this. It's going to cause the member to deform like this. And we are talking about bending. Then the last one we can talk about is what we refer to as torsion. As torsion, which we can also call twisting. Twisting. Now twisting occurs when forces apply to a body. For example, if I have this member here and then I apply one force in this direction as that, I try to rotational force like this and another rotational force like that. Then as this is moving this direction in the, it's moving up, this one is coming down like this. And so, the two are going to twist this body, which will cause a form of deformation to the body involved. This brings us to the end of lecture one. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, any clarifications, any comments, you can let us know at the comment session. Once again, thank you for your time and thank you for watching. Kindly subscribe, like, share, and hit the notification button. We'll meet again for our next lecture. Until then, bye-bye.